My name is Margaret Ellis Raymond. I'm a publishing consultant and author, and I was born with tricuspid atresia. If this is your first video, welcome to my channel. This is going to be a medical video, and it's going to be very different from most because there's a donut involved and also a lack of chocolate chip cookies that I am very sad about. We'll get to all of that later, but first let's chat about why I'm taking antibiotics. So as someone who has tricuspid atresia, dentist appointments require antibiotics. There are people who scoff at this use of antibiotics, and that's their right. While in college, I learned about superbugs, strains of bacteria that are resistant to several types of antibiotics. Quickly, I freaked out that my bacteria was now resistant because I had been taking antibiotics before every dentist appointment for the past several years. My cardiologist assured me that she weighs the benefits to the potential dangers in all prescriptions she gives her patients. That doctor-like answer did not quell my anxiety, so I grilled her for more information. She added that the antibiotics she prescribes before dentist appointments is a preventative measure for endocardesis, a medical term for the inflammation of the heart lining and the heart valves. Considering I only have one working valve, the mitral valve, I'll take my chances with superbugs. Check out the link in the description for more information on antibiotic use and always bring up concerns with your cardiologist or PCP. Everyone's heart condition is different, so pre-medication before the dentist may not be required. Please note that most information about antibiotic resistance is geared to make you panic and think horrible what if the human race was killed off by superbugs kinds of thoughts. So if you are someone who panics about these kinds of things, it might be helpful to know that the antibiotic resistance has been around since the 1980s, or probably even earlier, and how many cases of antibiotic resistance have you heard of? A strange fact I love about my dentist is their odd choice of waiting room food, but upon my arrival I saw that their glass cookie jar, usually filled with store-bought chocolate chip cookies, had been replaced with a glass bowl of fruit. The lack of chocolate chip cookies was apparently a precursor for what was to come. My hygienist took my blood pressure, which is not something my dentist's office usually does, so I asked if there was a specific purpose. She said that obtaining blood pressure is standard for hygienists. After doing some research online, the only other answer I can find is that patients visit dentists more than once a year, which enables them to accumulate more accurate blood pressure readings due to the frequency of visits. Having multiple readings in my medical file is not a bad idea, especially for someone like me. The key now is to make sure my PCP communicates with my dentist to obtain these readings. <laughs> Next, my hygienist felt the lymph nodes in my neck, which is always a strange experience. Then she raided my gum pockets by sticking some instrument between the gum and the tooth. I barely felt a thing, so it wasn't painful, but the ratings were. Healthy gums get a one, a two, or a three. I received mostly fours. Anything above a five requires Novocaine, so a deep clean with special instruments can be performed. While in the chair, I asked her to elaborate. She did a wonderful job of explaining, so here's what I learned. Number one, my toothbrushing is not up to par. When I brush my teeth, I only think to go over the teeth. In reality, brushing is required for both the gums and the teeth. When you brush the gums, they receive a massage that increases healthy blood flow. I brush my teeth with a manual toothbrush, which, compared to the rest of the human population, is archaic practice. My hygienist recommended I get an electric toothbrush. Ugh. Number two, I barely floss. Even though my boyfriend buys the flossers with the plastic handle to make it easier, I just don't do it. Number three, lack of flossing and half-decent brushing cause a slow buildup of plaque. The plaque is on the outside of the tooth. The gums notice the plaque, or something scientific like that, and tell your body to send white blood cells to fight it. Surprise, surprise, the white blood cells are in the blood and can't exit the gums to reach the tooth. The body sends more white blood cells and widens the blood vessels around the tooth so as to fight the plaque it can't reach. Because of this widening of the blood vessels, my gums are slightly puffy, hence the bleeding gums when I floss. I've needed to jump on the wagon of electric brushes for a long time, but the cost of replacement heads makes me second-guess this decision. They're easily $8 to $17. I could get a decent manual toothbrush at the dollar store, and let's face it, admitting I'm bad at something where I've consistently gotten praise is not fun. So yes, I will be getting an electric toothbrush, but my stubborn self has decided to wait until I can achieve decent manual brushing and consistent flossing. 
I swear I'm not a perfectionist. <laughs> the rest of the appointment went smoothly and I woke up the next morning for my annual physical. Two years ago, I switched primary care physicians. It has been the best decision I've ever made. I made the switch because I called my then PCP and found out she was too busy to schedule a sick appointment. Two days later, I was in the office with an available doctor and was shocked by how genuine she was. She looked me in the eye and I could tell she saw me as a human first and a patient second. She helped me through a simultaneous diagnosis of mono and tonsillitis. Needless to say, a primary care physician office can have a subpar doctor, but an amazing doctor could be just a door down. If you don't like your primary care physician, you have the right to switch. This goes for cardiologists as well. Find doctors that make you feel cared for and comfortable, because what's the point of going to them if they don't do that for you? After a wonderful bill of health and beautifully clean teeth from the day before, I bought myself a donut. Not just any donut, but one filled with bacon and cheddar cheese. Yes, they exist and are sinful. I got a clean bill of health, so now I'm having a donut. I picked up my contacts, saw a cute cat in our driveway, and then arrived at a restaurant to celebrate my grandmother's 90th birthday. The joy that party brought her seemed to change her age from 90 to 70. It was great to see her sharing stories and a meal with her friends. That evening, I attended a friend's art exhibit and found some wonderfully interesting pieces. Some made me think, others laugh out loud, and a few I wanted to take home. Unfortunately, I had forgotten my wallet. That evening, I realized I had a yeast infection because of the antibiotics I took for the dentist appointment, and because I didn't want to deal with it in that moment, my boyfriend and I went for a walk. Please click that like button if you enjoyed this style of video. Post a comment, connect with others who have heart conditions, share this video with someone you know, and as always, keep on being your unbeatable self. P.S. A special thank you to my sister and her fiancé for the ridiculously souped-up toothbrush. I now have cleaner teeth. <laughs> <clears throat> Why are you making farting noises? Wait, do it again. Oh gosh, he's warming up. He's warming up. <laughs> it just doesn't work with the beard, actually. Wow. Yeah, that really doesn't work. He's attempting farting noises on the futon. There we go. <laughs>